During the early months of the Clone Wars, Captain Rex and his torrent company were sent to the agricultural world of B2 on a mission to inspect the local farming facilities on the planet. After landing on the dusty world however, Captain Rex and Clone Sergeant Korrick, who was heavily involved at the Battle of Teth, come across something incredibly mysterious. One of the local farmers on the planet tells the two clones a tale about a separatist battle droid who has come back to life like a zombie and has been reanimating his fellow battle droid brothers. Rex and Korrick don't believe the farmer's story until they come face to face with the zombie droid for themselves. So before we get into it, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more awesome Star Wars lore content. The story begins with Captain Rex, Korrick and the Torrent Company touching down on the farming world of B2 in their LAAT gunship after being sent to inspect the local operations on the planet. The foreman and lead farmer on the planet had been capturing and collecting stranded B1 battle droids and other separatist droids for their own use, which angers Korrick, who tells Captain Rex that he hates war profiteers almost as much as he hates the clankers. Rex quickly and firmly responds to Korrick, telling him to keep that attitude on the LA-80 because the local Batuians aren't running a Tatooine-style black market. They're being commissioned by the Republic Senate. Korrick then brushes his captain's advice off, saying, Whatever you say, Captain, all I know is that the business of this planet caused the death of plenty of clones, including many from the Brave Torrent Company. Rex looks away from Korrick as he says this because deep inside of him, Rex wonders if this may actually be the truth. Moments after this, the clones of the Torrent Company touch down on the dusty surface of the planet where they are joyfully greeted by Peter, who is the foreman and leader of the plant works on the planet. Korrick is shocked at just how excitable the small Batuian is, but Rex quickly urges him to keep his mind on the mission. Just moments after he does this however, Peter rushes up to Captain Rex, hugging him around the waist with a tremendous amount of force for a being of his size. Rex is stunned by this, but remains composed and introduces himself and Korrick to Peter. Rex then quickly tells Peter that Republic Command has sent him and his men to the planet to investigate a disturbance, but that they weren't given too many details. The small Batuian then begins going on a long tangent about how he has created a scrap recycling plant on the planet and the fact that it is the largest in the Outer Rim, collecting thousands of destroyed and horribly damaged B1 battle droids. While the small foreman is talking, Korrick remarks that with the amount of B1 battle droids on the scrap pile, you'd think that the Republic were winning the war. And let me know down below whether you think it is right for Peter to go behind the backs of his people to collect and salvage these broken down battle droids, which does provide them with resources and funding to stay afloat, but also puts them in severe danger. There are definitely arguments both ways, so let me know down below what you think. Peter continues on, explaining the process of how he recycles the metal from the many fallen battle droids, happily telling Rex that he removes the useful components before melting down the shiny outer plating of the droids. Rex hurries Peter along with his story, this time being annoyed and asking him why exactly he needs the clone forces to help him out at all. This drives Peter into a massive panic, scaring him to the bones. Peter then worriedly tells Rex that he needs the clones on his homeworld because of something called the Reanimator. Rex and Korrick are absolutely lost, asking the what? In response, Peter continues his nervous walk and explains to Rex that the reanimator was a zombie-like droid who forged himself from the bodies of his fallen battle droid brothers. On top of this, this undead battle droid was raising his fellow clankers from the dead, bringing them back to life in order to fight the local population on the planet. Korrick, however, doesn't believe the story that the local scrapper is telling, asking Rex to pack up shop and move their men off the planet to somewhere more important. Rex does agree with Korrick, but he takes a moment to pause and evaluate his options. During this short pause, a massive blast of red and yellow light rushes through the area, taking the two clones by surprise and harshly knocking them to their feet. Peter begins to clench his hands nervously as Korrick and Rex urgently take cover. As the two clones look over the nearby crates that they are taking cover with, they spot the reanimator who is standing tall and bringing his shiny metal droid brothers back to life around him. Korrick quickly tells Rex that he would like to strike his last comment from the record about not believing the scrapper's story and Rex is happy to grant that wish if they manage to survive the horrible ordeal. As the clones continue to take cover from the quickly growing horde of battle droids, Peter begins to run off into the dusty hills behind them, absolutely scared to death. The reanimator then begins to shout absolutely crazy lines through his artificial voice box, claiming that he is the vengeance forged from rebirth. He is the chosen vessel of the droids, and that all shall fall before the might of the reanimated army. Yep, this zombie droid has gone absolutely insane. 
most likely as a result of mixing and matching his circuitry and components with the other types of battle droids from the massive metallic scrap pile. His body is a mixture of parts from IG-100 Magna Guards and B-1 battle droids. Korik quickly realizes that his blaster bolts are having absolutely no effect on the zombie reanimator from their current range, so he quickly agrees to retreat. While cautiously moving back from the wildly flailing reanimator, Korik tells his brothers that he absolutely hates retreating, but they quickly respond, asking him, but you still like breathing, right? The three are then quickly surrounded by reanimated B1 battle droids who aren't fully rebuilt properly, but they manage to rush up a small set of stairs, frantically bashing on the small door, desperate to be let inside. Peter rapidly opens the door and brings the clone brothers inside, where they are able to lie down the injured clone of the group and allow Korik to give him the necessary medical treatment since he is the medic of Torrent Company. While this is happening, the reanimator rapidly rushes to the outside of the building where the clones are worriedly hiding and explains to his reanimated undead army, surround the Republic scum, we shall convert their hiding place into a crematorium. Moments later, Rex apologizes to Peter for doubting his story, but tells the small b 2 that the reanimator is only a reconstructed IG-100 Magna Guard with a faulty neural processor and a bad attitude. To the fright of Peter, Rex tells him that he has all the tools he needs to take down the malfunctioning droid. The clones and Peter then burst out of the building with rapid force, to the absolute shock of the reanimator. The droid then furiously exclaims, hunt them down, the cowering lizard monkeys. In response to this, Korik begins casually singing while eating an apple, leaning up against the nearby metal building. The droid is completely enraged at this, sending his army of reanimated battle droids towards him. Korik warns the droids not to come any closer, while continuing to calmly eat his apple, jokingly asking them, did no one warn you that clones have Jedi power too? Korik then swiftly reaches his arm out, and all of the droids are knocked off of their metallic legs onto the cold hard ground. The zombie Magna Guard droid is completely shocked and stunned at this action by Korik. In a panic, he orders his droids to get back up off the dusty ground and attack the casual clone. The horde of B1 battle droids then rapidly piles onto Korik to the satisfaction of the reanimator, causing him to laugh crazily, believing that he had outsmarted the clone. Again, to the absolute shock and surprise of the reanimator, Korik has survived the monumental pylon by the droids and stands up with his back straight. The droids are then quickly repelled from Korik, allowing him to pull out his blaster and viciously take the reanimator's metal head off with a swift blast of energy. Following the death of the reanimator and his undead army of droids, Rex and Peter reveal that they were simply using a magnetic grapple to lift the droids up into the air and to keep Korok out of harm's way. Rex and Korok are genuinely impressed with Peter's accuracy with the grapples, telling him that he would make a fantastic Republic sharpshooter in the Grand Army of the Republic. Peter is ecstatic with the clones, so glad that they were able to free his people from the threat of the droid zombie army being brought back to life to dominate and hold them down with fear. And to end the story, Rex asks his sergeant and medic, Korik, if this very interesting mission was enough to change his view on war profiteers. Korik quickly responds to his captain, telling him that he wouldn't go that far, but he does know one thing, the only reliable battle droid is a very carefully recycled one. Peter then waves the clones away as they zoom off in their LAAT gunship, ready to fight another day. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a like and comment down below if you enjoyed. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.